Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Day, and today um, uh, we're going to talk about Steve Chen, yes, the co-founder of YouTube, and together with uh, Rebecca Fanning. Yeah, thanks, Diana. Happy to be here. Yes, I'm so happy that we two are talking about this. You know, there were so many uh, very successful for people in Silicon Valley, and Steve Chen is one of uh, them. And I interviewed him uh, last, uh, actually yesterday. Okay. So he was so funny, and he uh, he together with his friend, uh, actually his colleague, yeah. from uh, PayPal, yeah. uh, started YouTube. Uh, yeah. But at, actually before YouTube, and someone already doing that, right? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. We're going back to about 2005 now. Mm -hmm. And at the same time that they're creating YouTube in the US, uh, China was creating it their own YouTube versions. Mm -hmm. So we saw Gary Wong create um, Tudo. Tudo, yes. Potato. <laughs> yeah, couch potato. Yes. And then Victor Ku came out with uh, Yoku. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's amazing that actually yeah, some they people were said, yeah, Some people said Gary Wong copied you, you, no. YouTube, which is not true. It's not true. Yeah, which is not true because they actually they started before YouTube. That's amazing yes. that yeah. it is true. But YouTube become more successful and bigger. Um, well, they both became very successful. Mm -hmm. I think nobody could really argue with Google buying oh, yeah, YouTube right. for that huge mm -hmm. amount, like mm -hmm. $1.6 billion. Mm -hmm. But then um, Tudo was successful too. They went public in the US mm -hmm. and then they were acquired by Yoku. Mm -hmm. And now it's a merged company. So yeah. they were both successful. They're both very successful. But acquisition is always a faster path to yes, riches. Right. You know, yeah. With an IPO, you have to wait a little bit longer, I think, sometimes that's to right. cash out. Yeah, YouTube <laughs> sold for $1.6 billion. Amazing, right? Oh, that's really amazing. And I think it was nine months after YouTube was created. It really? wasn't that long after oh, it was created. They were just so lucky. <laughs> yeah, true. I think the, the, the founders are really smart. And Chad Hurley, yeah. uh, together with Steve Chen, yeah. and they did something which changed the whole world. But yeah. they are not. They're so low key and not really, you know, That's true. well known. That, yeah, they're, mm -hmm. they're low profile, mm -hmm. and, and they've stayed low profile even though they're billionaires today. They've mm -hmm. stayed low profile. Yeah. I think they're very engaged with the startup community. Exactly, and Steve Chen right now is going back to Google uh, Venture, and his yeah. passion is to help the startups. And uh, let's watch the interview I did for him. Okay time online and people that are creating creative content for the first time and it's all mixed together and so mm -hmm. I think that's it's better for the watchers for the viewers because they get to see what they want to watch mm -hmm. it's a problem for the creators that's continue to be challenging you mm -hmm. have to keep creating mm -hmm. good content in order to keep the the viewers loyal mm -hmm. now what do you see the trend especially on the mobile uh, well, I think it's continued to go this way. Um, I made this point just now that uh, even as I was leaving Google, it was 17 hours of content per minute that was being uploaded and contributed to YouTube, right? Uh, and so from YouTube's recommendation search team, from YouTube viewers, it's how do you find even within that, within that 17 hours of content, how do you find that five minutes or 10 minutes of content that you want to watch? Uh, it's been six years since I've left YouTube. That number is far larger now. There's a lot more YouTube-like services out there that has even more content. So mm -hmm. it's really, when you come down to it, it's you have 20 minutes, 30 minutes of time mm -hmm. to actually relax and, 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 and see what's new, see where you want to uh, watch content, read mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. um, and it's. I think this problem is going to be a larger and larger one, which is how do I fill that 20 minutes up with the most appropriate content for what I want to watch, what I'm interested in? Mm -hmm. Well, right now, the Google got TV and uh, Apple got TV, and do you think that the internet video is going to be on TV in, the, in what way, and how, do, how does that make money? Um, well, I think there's a separation, too. I think there's uh, Apple TV and Chromecast. Mm -hmm. They're devices, but they're not actually content, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in so far as Apple doesn't create its own content. It licenses some of it, but it doesn't create its own. Chromecast, um, it doesn't, it's, it's not paired up with any specific content. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different applications that can use APIs to distribute content mm -hmm. onto Chromecast. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think what that makes it easier is now you don't have to sit in front of your laptop or desktop to watch this content. Mm -hmm. Now you can actually sit in your living room and uh, mm -hmm. watch the same good content, mm -hmm. which makes it, again, harder for content creators to try to get the best content out there and how to get mm -hmm. that in front of mm -hmm. people's faces. And how, to, uh, how, do, how does that uh, you know, device and content providers work together to benefit each other? 
what what is the the future for this? Um, I think everybody should and should, in order to be successful, keep in mind what's mm -hmm. best for the viewer, what do the viewers want, yes. right? And so mm -hmm. from the perspective of mm -hmm. the device manufacturers, it's how to make it easiest to be able to get this content in mm -hmm. front of my living room, in front of my TV, in front of these mm -hmm. devices mm -hmm. that can display really high mm -hmm. definition graphics and video and mm -hmm. audio but I can't get the video that I want to watch mm -hmm. onto those devices. And same thing on the other side, which is here's really good content, mm -hmm. but I can't get this to be watched on the places mm -hmm. that I want to get watched. And so there are, I think they, they play nicely with one another mm -hmm. for the ultimate benefit of, um, of the viewer that wants to watch. Somebody said the viewers doesn't know what they want. Do you believe that? Uh, you, I think there's a certain sense because if, I mean, uh, there's two, here, here, I mean, I think uh, when you search for something on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, there, there are typically two sort of buckets of people that are searching mm -hmm. for content. It's either I've seen this piece of content before, I've seen it a hundred times before, and I just want to watch it again because it's funny, because, you know, uh, it's something that brings back and evokes mm -hmm. memories. Or I'm interested in good soccer goals. Mm -hmm. I want to watch something I've never seen before, mm -hmm. but the best goals uh, that I haven't seen before I want to watch and mm -hmm. so it's difficult it's not like Google search mm -hmm. where whenever you search on something in that Google box it's to find the most mm -hmm. appropriate content for those keywords I think when it comes to video it's about kind of like listen to music mm -hmm. you know you want to rehear songs that you've heard yes, over and yes. over again when yeah. you search Beatles not mm -hmm you know, uh, not something that you've never... Yeah, heard this before. topic can, can continue on and, uh, and I, I, the question, this is innovation data. So what is innovation by your definition in this one sentence? Mm, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's good. Well, there's, uh, there's one thing, I mean, the first, uh, it's a funny question. We lied about that for about five years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about, and the story that I can tell better is the, uh, the lied story, the one about us sitting in my house in San Francisco with some dinner party and having videos and photos taken of the event and uh, the photos were easy to share and videos were not. Um, that None of that happened. Um, there was no dinner party. Um, and that all came out when the Viacom <laughs> lawsuit happened and we had to tell the truth. <laughs> uh, no, what really happened was actually just sitting down with Chad, uh, Chad, Chad Hurley, the other co-founder uh, of YouTube, and just really brainstorming about where we thought, you know, uh, the internet was going to make a big dent next. And here, what, what industries that the internet, with sort of the technology behind the internet, what was that going to do to make it easier in what industries? And it came pretty obvious, you know, photos was big at the time, and there's so many places to share photos, but all of a sudden you have videos, every device out there can take a video every uh, and more and more, uh, iPhone wasn't even out at that time, more and more you can carry these devices in your pocket to take these videos. You can upload in your pocket without having to be back on a computer. But, uh, I, you know, it's, it's unimaginable 2005. Like, there was no place to actually share this content. So you can take it, but you can't actually share it online. And so it became kind of this, it was more of a, I think it was obvious what we were trying to, the, the problem we were trying to solve, it was rather this thing about can the technology out there solve it? Is it cheap enough to actually stream all that content? Can we pay for the bandwidth as a single, you know, streaming content provider? Can we pay for every video scene? Um, can the transcodes, can people have the bandwidth to be able to watch this stuff real time? So that was a lot of the stuff that we were trying to figure out. Let me think about it. I'll have some coffee. No, don't <laughs> drink and drive and that kind of advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just work really hard. Don't, don't, don't go out. I, it's always like the same thing over and over again. Um, I'll think of something creative. Um, I think uh, I think probably the the there's I mean there's the, there's a few um, back when uh, I was working closely with Chad we uh, we defined a set of bullet points that we kind of followed ourselves we try to follow even though um, we got into our times and there's there's I don't know of one specific thing but here's a few things you know one of them is uh, stick true to the idea that you have in mind so it's very easy to have a sort of feature creep things crawling in over and making things more complicated so uh, that's something is just to keep simple and make it 
uh, continue to be true to what you try to do in the first place. Uh, another very important thing, um, I think, is that whenever you do have a good idea, it's inevitable that somebody will copy that idea, uh, and you just have to expect it. Um, you can't be surprised by it. So I think always have something in your back pocket as kind of the next thing that you're going to respond with, uh, and similarly continue down the road. Um, so always have something else that when the competitor comes out with something else similar, you always have something to respond with. Mm, those are two. <laughs> and advertisements and... Uh, now I think um, I think I was just saying uh, up on stage there. I think it's kind of now there are more ways than we can find uh, at home to access sort of these what these uh, the reservoirs of good content. Um, but now I think it's coming around again to be able to create how to create good content again and so uh, there's going to be some creative things to be able to make it easier for people to create content uh, to make it easier to be able to combine music together with transitions with effects to actually create more professional looking content uh, and to you know I think YouTube in the previous generation has made it such that if you do create content you can upload it and people can watch it now and now I think we're seeing this next stage where there's so much content out there it's about trying to create better content in software to make that easier. Okay, then last question is, who decided your hairstyle? I think that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy question. That's uh, just in the dark, five minutes in the morning, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did that by yourself? Five seconds, okay. I mean. Okay, well, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you you see the Steve, I uh, mentioned about his hairstyle. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. which is so funny. <laughs> it is funny, yeah, yeah. You know, he says he does that five seconds in the dark. Yeah, in the dark, right. yes. <laughs> you can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what it looks like normally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, who he is. He's still, yeah. still very young. Yeah, that's And true. that's kind of his passion. Yeah, it's his style, yeah. for sure. Yeah, style, yeah, that's very interesting. Look at this picture. Actually, my colleague, Sandy, took that picture for him. I really like this picture. Yeah, it captured his, his spirit. Know, yeah. yeah, his spirit and his characteristic. Yeah, I agree, it does. <laughs> yes, that's right. And you know, uh, Steve Chen is the one, the co-founder for the YouTube, and uh, Gary Wang, Wang Wei, is the founder of Tudo. Right. Yeah, Tudo was earlier than YouTube. You, yeah. you interviewed Gary, right? Yeah, and uh, Gary's a different character from Steve. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a romantic at heart, and you know, he's uh, very uh, kind of creative and sentimental. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I first interviewed him at, a, at his studio in Shanghai, his whole studio was decorated with a, a very loft style, style like Silicon Valley oh. graffiti all over the all over the studio and uh -huh. swings and kind of playful things in, uh -huh. in the studio. So it was great fun to interview him then, and that was when Gary was just getting started. I heard that <laughs> you, you also even talked with him about the romance, right? I did, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before before trouble began for Gary oh, yeah. uh, in the romantic sphere of his life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it definitely, uh, mm -hmm. Gary is a true romantic at heart, I think. Mm -hmm. I interviewed him later on in uh, Beijing, mm -hmm. uh, in a shopping mall in mm -hmm. Beijing, uh, right in public. And uh, we were talking about the uh, internet censorship issue mm -hmm. of, um, of videos mm -hmm. uh, in China. And so Gary uh, did talk about that. You know, difficult because in the, in the environment and yeah. he, breaks through so many other things. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the internet and censorship and, mm -hmm. and the video speed and mm -hmm. the idea that uh, this was all so new in China. Much, you know, the internet was not nearly as developed in mm -hmm. China as it was in the U.S. at that time. Yeah, that's another person, Victor Ku. Yeah, Victor was uh, at the same time, about the same time, the Gary. Of, yeah, uh, you Ku. Yeah, yeah, and that also went public mm -hmm. uh, in New York and mm -hmm. is a big success story. And they ended up buying Gary's, acquiring Gary's company, mm -hmm. and now Gary is doing um, uh, cinema. Mm -hmm. um, so he's become like a film producer wow. in, in China. Well, so let's just watch a little bit about the video. Actually, Rebecca took that video with her own camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, in a very crowded, very public shopping mall. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Let's watch that from uh, many years ago. Yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, I started as an engineer, which is, yeah. uh, and did my MBA, and I'm in this uh, very creative uh, industry, but uh, yeah, I, I wrote a book. Uh, That's what I was thinking of, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. What was the book on? It was a book 
Yeah, what was it about? It's a, it's a, a, I wrote it when I was 24, so it's about a love story. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, now you watch the both Gary Wong and Steve Chen. Yeah, I kind of really like both of them. They are handsome. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say handsome. <laughs> they're, they're, they're funny. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, they're colorful characters, yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're so different. But I think then, uh, yeah, one in China and also and Steve was born in Taiwan and immigrated yeah. to the United States at yeah. the age of eight. Yeah. Yeah, he's ch you know, I was trying to speak with him in Chinese. Uh -huh. And uh, he agreed at the beginning. <laughs> when we started, he turned to English. He said he feel more comfortable. Uh, yeah, and sure. he was worried that he might use a wrong sentence. Uh, I see, <laughs> yeah. Of course, after so many years in the yes, U.S. Yes, exactly. Well, and Gary has uh, his uh, advanced degree from INSEAD mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. So he's got a really great education mm -hmm. background behind him and career background, too, uh, before he started uh, to do in mm -hmm. China. Yeah, those two young men are true innovators, and we can learn a lot. They really inspire so many yeah. entrepreneurs. A whole generation of internet video content. Oh, they are really, <laughs> yeah. They change the, the, the way of our living. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, the sharing, the mm -hmm. idea of sharing videos online, and today video is so important, mm -hmm. and you, you can't have text without videos, you can't have photos without videos. Exactly. <laughs> video is everything. Video yeah. is everything. Yeah, we are creating videos here, and I'm going to work with Rebecca Fanny more in the future Yeah. to create a good videos. <laughs> good. I'm looking forward to that, Diana. Yes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us. See you next time. As a startup in Silicon Valley, innovation is our DNA. It's inside our blood. What is innovation? Very confident. It's a way of thinking. It's a philosophy. It's a mindset. Uh, it's very closely related to leadership. For me, it's really about finding the right, the right fit between the product and the market. And have a strong technology position, a, a strong market impact. Innovation can be an idea can be a product, can be a service, or can be a thinking. It can be everything out of box thinking, not limited to your background, to the past. Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Ding, and today we are going to talk about Cloud Festival. Today we have Carrie Davis, and she's here to share her story, which is so inspiring. What we are doing here is to summarize, bring out the point, and give a good presentation. Help people to bring out their idea to the whole world. It's very important to be able to spot uh, human talent and to be a good leader. More importantly, it's how our corporate and uh, partners perceive the value that's come out of the event. It was all about uh, seizing the opportunity rather than looking at the world as a set of problems. I want to change the paradigm of angel investing being local. I want all of us to think global and to look at great opportunities in Asia or Europe, wherever it is in the world. Come, come to Dingling TV. Let us work together to bring out your idea to share with the whole world.